Hi, and welcome to, to this module, um, module 15, where we'll talk about running CPI content on your PO system. So uh, why do you want to do this? Um, there's actually quite a lot of reasons why this makes a lot of sense. Um, so if you have a lot of uh, on-premise system and you want to connect to them a lot easier, running them on your inside of your landscape without having to go out to the cloud and back again makes it a lot easier because yeah a lot less latency easier to run things and stuff like that so it makes a lot of sense for you to to do it um if you have scenarios that's just on premise um the other scenario where it makes sense is if you have you already have your cpi uh, the PI license, you have paid for a number of uh, cores that that one is, is licensed for. So you just want to reuse that existing license without having to occur extra cost uh, for each connection that you're making. Um, then it also makes sense to use it. And yeah, for some of the, the things that you're normally doing in CCPPM, the this uh, the CPI flow makes a lot of sense either co for correlating messages, running some of these other scenarios, it may be easier to create it in instead of creating in CCBPM or BPM BPMN on the PO stack. So sometimes you may want to consider: Do we actually want to create a technical BPM if we do not have any user interaction? It may be a lot easier to use the, the CPI content. And then I guess uh, the other one is if you already, if there's a cost, a solution from SAP that, that actually solves this and you actually want to run it on your local system. So uh, there's obviously some limitations for this. Uh, so you need, uh, a, I'm not sure if you need a Java only, but at least you need a, a Java 7.5 uh, is re required. Um, the way they are doing the development is that they are SAP would release a couple of patches a year, uh, to so every month they are creating um, releases of CPI in the cloud, and then they're taking some of these things and then converting them to or back propagating them to to the CPI at I guess a couple of uh, service pack a year. So that means that it will be a couple of months uh, behind the, the cloud version. And this gives some, some challenges from time to time where it says, well, you're trying to use this profile, but this is no longer available in that specific setting. And then you want to convert it back to those, uh, those older settings. So that, that may take some time. And it also means that not all of the functionalities that you want to use is actually available in the PI system. Uh, monitoring stuff like that is also a little different um, but I guess we'll see that one thing you need to do is uh, you need to open an OSS as they write here uh, give uh, write to SAP please with these uh, component information and say you want to enable your CPI tenant to, to run in in the system so that's one of the, the requirements that you need um, to get SAP to do this and obviously this only needs to be for your development tenant uh, because uh, yeah that's all where it all makes sense um, so once you have done that you would then oh, in your CPI system you would then instead of just having one here with the cloud platform profile you would have a number of different ones here and obviously so when we for instance have an iFlow so let's take our I think number eight here is pretty good um, so we will do a copy of number eight to number 15 on PI coming and what you'll then see uh, 
is that once you have enabled that one, you would have option here to select different support packages that you want to do. And if you press save here, it may say, okay, so we can see here it actually is complaining that, I think we can see the error here. This is not supported by the version 12 profile, so instead we need to delete it, recreate it as an HTTP. And we can see there may be a little, oh, not a repo. So we, if there's a lot of connection, this could take quite a little, lot of time to, to configure this. Uh, and also some of the other attributes need to be changed. But that's actually all you need to do in, in the iFlow. Um, if you're going to, to continue on investigating whether or not this needs to be an on-premise or cloud version, I do recommend that you just keep, make a copy of it and say this is on-prem. And then you can do the development there, and if things work, you can run them there. Otherwise, you can run them in the cloud. I think we may be able to deploy this. Ah, okay, so we cannot deploy content here, so so I guess it's a good idea to have two versions, one that's for, for on-prem and one that's for, for cloud. Um, and that way you can, yeah, have the same thing, do some of the, some shared development but you obviously need to do manual steps to migrate the, the new developments to, to the on-premise systems. So uh, one really irritating thing is the, there's a standard uh, virus scanner that requires you to install the virus scanner on the PO system and I it's not that many customers that I've seen that actually are using the virus scanner. So I was trying to enable the virus scanner on my PI system and that was pretty difficult. Obviously, if you're a trained basis guy, it may be a little easier and you know where the virus scanner is, but this is how you actually enable the virus scanning of these iFlows. Otherwise, whenever you're deploying something new, it will complain and say, hey, uh, enable the virus scanner. Uh, yeah, so, so you want to select the version of, of PI or PO that you have, the pro correct profile, uh, and then be sure to, to minimize the, the gap or apply service pack often so you don't get something that's three mold or a year old, so you have to update all the different elements in the iFlow. So it's better just to, to keep it update and, and migrate often or update often. Um, yeah, so obviously remember that you want to specify as much in the configuration because you can also configure these things in in when you're uploading it. Uh, locking mode is, is a little different. You will only have the text locking uh, for now. Maybe that's also going to change. Um, you have the options to set up the, the standard component-based message alerting that we also have in PI. Um, that allow you to actually extract data and process it. And then you can actually connect it with a GMS provider. Uh, so you can actually test how GMS works. So you can either use ActiveMQ solids or uh, IBM uh, message broker. So let me just show you a little of what you can do here. So uh, let's just make one external configuration. We'll just create a symbol. So we'll create one, save a version. So now we'll then go here, go to our 15. 
download it. And we'll then go to our PR system. And here we now have this uh, integration content. And you can then take deploy it. Maybe I just need to restart the system. Just a moment. I just uh, enabled this one now. Okay, so um, I found out that I had not saved the configuration in here and then obviously it does not take into account. Um, so uh, you can then select deploy and you have a couple of uh, options here. You can either create a, a destination in the uh, PI system or you can specify them and see if that one works. If I configured, no, haven't configured correctly. Otherwise, as we have downloaded here, you can select your PI component, create a CPI course. It's then starting. And we can then see, um, we have here, we can view, set our logging level. Um, hmm. So we can actually enable trace on it. Um, that I think sometimes you need to set up some specific rules for it. If we have a configuration here. So we will just deploy this change. We can see all the endpoints that's been activated. So we can see we now have an endpoint that's called here. And it's just the same one as we already have in number 15. So that means we can reuse this one, change it to the PR host name, change the username, and we can run it. And we can then check, oh, so it's not applied this change yet. So obviously we would expect that it that this change is being applied. So that's normally the way I would would see the data. Uh, we can, in our MPL here, we can see all the different flows. We can see the trace messages, uh, what has been sent at all activities. Okay, so I think this may be new compared to what I saw on the previous system, but maybe it's because it was not, uh, tracing was not enabled. So here you can actually see quite a bit, which is a bit interesting. Um, so you can see all the different payloads uh, header messages and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, pretty comfortable. Uh, I guess it's not showing properties, which I would imagine there should be some up uh, in this flow. So let's just see if it worked now. Hmm. A bit strange. I would have imagined that it will. So maybe I need to save first and then deploy. So in the meantime, we also have the option here to create a rules. So we can either use some of the standard one. So we have a general one here, alert to email, and here you can set up uh, PI alerts, or you can actually use the ERT application. Um, so there we are. We have some some different ones that subscribing on, and you would actually be able to get the the different alerts that that's being processed in with this way. So this makes it easier. There's just one way you need to to handle all uh, flows in in just one one way. So there's one way of handling alerts in this one, but obviously it's it's different than the than the cloud. Uh, and what the capabilities is you have there. So let's see if that doesn't work now. So now we can see our external parameter has changed. We're getting all of these different uh, attributes. Um, so yeah, we can see it's it's fairly easy to deploy things on it. Uh, you can see, yeah, messages that's being processed, uh, default uh, rules, so let's just see what's going on here. 
um, yeah, and pretty easy to, to configure. We have our security artifacts here. We can deploy known host uh, user name and password. So if we want to connect to our PI system, we can also connect uh, Uh, in the same way we have on, on cloud, but I th so I think there is So you don't have uh, Certificates here So maybe it's then using the, the normal certificate store from SAP and you can see all endpoints You can see if there's any locks in, in your application and then here you have a uh, DMS uh, configuration you can see you can set up uh, some of these and if you have the generic client you can also use uh, the websphere MQ um, and with this you would have actually the option so if you have configured for instance one of these um, yeah you can pick messages out of a queue and use this as a way of un understanding how you can actually create uh, asynchronous web flows that that works using uh, any of these uh, these adapters um, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that that makes sense to to deploy things here on, on the on-premise world because yeah, you f at least for some scenarios you want to use it um, if if any of these uh, parameters as we talked about here uh, is let's see, we covered all of this. So if if any of these things that you have uh, just using on-premise connection. If you want to yeah, reuse the license or you already have a lot of uh, development in your PI system and m may want to reuse some of these uh, scenarios for it. Um, and then if you want better handling of, of some of the, the flows instead of creating NetWeaver that BPMs, then this could also be a, a way to go with it. So uh, yes, thanks for, for watching. I hope uh, this has been, been helpful and enabled you actually to create your iFlows uh, on on the PI system. And I have been talking with, with some clients that are actually say, well, this makes a lot of sense in some of the, our scenarios because some of these capabilities, it's easy to deploy, run, run things there. Um, so uh, go check it out and see how it works. So uh, thanks for watching.